what we're going to talk about tonight, uh, we're going to start by talking about rebranding videos. And I want to, I want to give you a perspective on rebranding. If you get this perspective, then th the whole idea about taking PLR and redoing it in a way that's going to uh, both help you to generate more leads and then to make more money, I think this will, th this will kind of make it a little clearer as to what it is you're trying to accomplish when you're doing this, right? And I think that's what everybody wants to, 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 to know. So let's dive right in um, and let's start by talking about rebranding videos. Let's talk about rebranding videos. Um, first, b before we get started, it's important to kind of understand uh, that what we're trying to do in, is when we're rebranding that video is to get our USP in there. And so we want to we want to define what the USP is. And USP is basically going to be, you know, whatever that one thing is that your business or your brand does that other people cannot do. So in other words, what is it that I can get from you that I can't get elsewhere? What is it that you, that you bring to the table in whatever it is that you're doing that other people don't have? I mean, if you're you're going to be redoing video, and let's say you're redoing video, even if the the video you're redoing is going to be on weight loss. Right. If you are a, if you're going to be bringing other weight loss products, or you're going to be bringing, let's say, personal develop pro, development products, and you're going to be doing more than one, what is it that you're doing uniquely in the marketplace? And really, if you're not doing something uniquely in the marketplace, trying to define what the USP is is a good opportunity to say, hey, you know what? What is it that people want that they value that I can bring to them that they cannot get elsewhere? That is really what you want to try to do. So, 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 when we when we put into uh, when we put something else, when we add to a a a piece of PLR, we add to text PLR. If we add to a video, what are we trying to add to it? We're trying to say something in that product that by the time by the time the the person who's reading it, they finish it, they finish consuming it, that they're left with the impression that hey, you know what, this was great. What I got, I got uniquely, and I can only get it from someplace else. And that might mean the uniqueness of the information, yes, but it also can be anything that you're going to do to the PLR that's going to be unique that people cannot get elsewhere. So, so USP is going to be important. So let's talk about what, what a brand is, because a brand is different. And a brand is what you're trying to reinforce over and over and over again, right? So in other words, what is it the mess? What message are you sending across every single time somebody comes in contact with your content? Somebody comes in contact with one of your products. Somebody comes in contact with your, uh, you know, with your webinar. Somebody comes in contact with your opt-in. Somebody comes in contact with your social media profile. What are you trying to re reintroduce, right? What are you trying to reinforce? What are you saying over and over again? And think about what a brand is, right? If I were to brand a horse, it would be something that I kind of that 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 I basically took a. A, 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 a something and and just uh, and, and just almost in in blazoned my uh, that my logo or something on someone. So how do you get somebody to the point where you 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 almost you have branded yourself into their consciousness? Well, it's something that you repeat over and over again. A brand is about repetition. So what do you want to repeat over and over again? What do you want to say over and over again? That's part of your USP. So again, the brand is what you repeat. It's more than a tagline because it has to be what you want to get into my brain as your customer if I don't hear anything else. When I remember you, you've got to get something into my brain when you have the opportunity. And that's really what rebranding does. Again, I'm all for changing things so that you put your logo in them. I'm all for changing things so that you put your URL in things. I mean, that's that's fine, but you can do so much more with PLR because you have a captive audience. If somebody's reading something that either either you bought and you and you redid, or somebody or, or you bought and that you, uh, you you know you added your links to, you have an opportunity at that point to say something that's going to again brand yourself, right? Something you're repeating to them. And so basically, you want to have those two things in your mind when you create a branded bumper, right? Uh, so, so, so yes, you're going to put something at the beginning and the end of a video, and you can, or the be beginning and the end of a set of videos, and it's going to be branded. So again, that branded bumper should be what you want to repeat, number one, 
And number two, it should be a USP, not just a tagline, not just your, your URL. It should be a branded bumper. And again, even if you have, even if your, 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 what you're trying to get across in the brand is going to be a call to action, right? Even if it's going to be go to this page and get this one thing that they can only get from you right, that's going to be your message, then you've got to take the opportunity inside of your branded bumper to say and give a call to action to something that's unique over and over and over again. So the, 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 the key to branding anything in PLR is as, is as many times as you can say it, as many times as you can get it in as many times as you can place it in front of the customer, as many times as you can hear it, within, again, without them, without ruining the experience for them, you want to get your, your, your message, the one message you want, you want them to take away in front of that PLR video. What's the logic behind that? The logic behind that is that in, in the call to action, Again, um, when people consume information, they're, 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 they're probably going to be uh, skimming things. They're probably going to be skipping over something. They're not going to spend a long time with it. So what do you want to say at the very beginning of that video if you don't get a chance to say anything else that's going to be unique and that you want to say over and over again? That is what you have to think about when you start putting together a branded, a branded bumper. What can I say? Right? What can I get people to do? What am I trying to drive people toward? Again. Um, in the branded bumper, what is the USP? You know, what can you say? So what is an example of something that you can say in a branded bumper? Um, when you're talking about, first of all, uh, your unique take on the information. So in other words, yes, they're going to get PLR from, let's say, us, but you are going to explain what it means in your context. So you get a PLR video, and what you're going to do is you're going to tell people what it means. Let's say that your niche is... Uh, weight loss, uh, you know, weight loss instructors. Well, wh what is, what is, what can a weight loss instructor do with, let's say, Amazon S3? Well, you're going to explain that because you're the expert on your niche. If you are the expert in, in, uh, let's say, a productivity coaching. Right? You're going to bring context to the PLR, and that is what you're trying to do in the branded bumper. You're going to give context, number one. Number two, you are also going to make sure that at the end of your, your discussion, whatever it is that you're bringing to that unique PLR video, that you're going to leave people with, uh, with a, 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 an explicit instruction to go and do something. Right, and that is what you can say inside of your branded bumper. Um, should you do one, or should you do, should you do one for each video? If possible, you should do a branded bumper for each video that you're going to be selling. You should do a branded bumper for one that each for each video that you're going to be putting on your website. If you're going to use PLR, number one, you should be giving context to it. Number two, you should be stating your brand. Number three, you should have a USP. All those three elements make a branded bumper. So again, yes. Uh, it's necessary for you to for you to make it unique and make it uh, make a make a good experience from the video. Yes, it's you. It's it's great to have let's say something that you say about your business, but you've got to give the call to action too. All three things belong in the branded bumper. Um, the, the question is going to be now. The question comes up: Should you outsource the voiceover? And I'm going to always say no to that. Right, because again, especially when it comes to the PLR video, you can have your voice part of the video as long as you're bringing valuable context. Right, when you say inside of the video, here's what you're going to say. Let's say that you 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 bought a PLR video and and, and they're going to hear my voice teaching a concept. Well, you're going to come on at the beginning, and you're going to tell them what it means. You're going to point out to them some of the things they're about to see and how they should think about it. You're going to point out to them how they're going to use it in your niche. It should be your voice doing that. And again, you can do that credibly by saying, hey, we partner with this company to teach these things. But here are the things that you're going to have to remember about what you are about to see. Then, really and truly, if you really want to do a high-quality job with the video, you put a bumper at the end. And that bumper says something like, hey, th this is what happened in this video. Here are the things that you want to think about once again. In order to get more information about more of these things, 
here's where you want to go to this page in order to get this thing that we have for you because we're the only ones that do this, right? All of those three things should be inside of your bumper. The context, the, the, the branding, and the USP. Again, every time you get the chance, because what you're trying to do is reinforce that the information they're getting, they can only get it from one place. The way you deliver it is the only, way, the only place they can get it, and you are the only one that can give it to them. So <clears throat> let's talk about video only. So we, we're going to let's go on screen. So you should have a video editor if you're going to rebrand your video. The most important thing are going to be the things that we have just discussed, right? Because if you're trying to figure out, well, what should I say in my bumper, right? We, we, those are the things that you must put in there in order for it to help you to generate more profit, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to import a PLR video, right? I'm just going to import a video here. I'm going to bring that video onto the timeline. Right now, I've got I've got a couple of choices when I rebrand the video. Of course, what I can do is I can record another video. Right now, let's just say that for the sake of argument, let's just say that this video is the one that you recorded as your bumper and this video is the one you recorded as your close right now let's say that you recorded those two videos what are you going to do with those videos well when it comes to Camtasia all you're going to have to do is you're going to need to bring these things down to the timeline now those things are a little long but uh, but, but that actually, that's actually fine because I want I want to show you how to do this anyway Let's say that this is a little long and all you're really going to need is a little bit of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to the point. I'm going to cut out a lot of this inside of Camtasia. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this video to this point. I'm going to hit the split command and I'm going to take that totally out. Right? Let's say I might take some more out of this. And all I have here is the beginning of my, of my, of my bumper. I'm going to put this here at the beginning. I'm going to slide this down. I can bring these things down to the same track. And typically inside of any video editor, one of the things you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to use transitions. And, and, and now <laughs> you can do all kinds of things with transition. And typically, when it comes to transitions, the most conservative thing is going to be the best. So don't 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 try to don't get people distracted with something that's too fancy. The one that I personally like to use is the flip, right? So all I got to do is drag that down. Now, again, um, you might have it might work differently inside of your version of Camtasia. It might work differently inside of your video editor. But all I've got to do is bring that down to the timeline. So let's see what's going to happen here. So when when that transition happens, it's going to turn, right? So, so that's that's what happens. Let's see. Let's watch that again. Okay. So basically, that's what I that's that's what a transition does. So, so at the end of this of the of the visual um, piece that I did, one of the things that's going to tie it together that this is going to be something different even though it's your voice going to be your voice is going to be different from mine you can you can help that process by doing a transition right so so in other words it 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 may seem a bit of a disconnect if 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 they're listening to your voice and then they start listening to mine right but 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 it won't be a disconnect if you use a transition and you want the transition to be visual just like the one that I just did. And you're going to be able to do the same thing about, about, about a bumper at the end. So, for example, if I were to do a bumper at the end, I'm going to do the very same thing, right? So I'm going to find the closer. I'm going to come back here to the, to the clip bin. Right? I'm going to add that one to the timeline. Let's say I'm only going to use a little bit of this.
I'm going to cut this off. And then I'm going to use another transition, right? I personally, I like to use the very same transition. I don't like to, to use two different transitions in the same one, right? So, so, so again, um, I like to have this here. So that's all we're really that's all we're really trying to do visually with the you know with the transition. Um, okay, so qu one of the questions is how do I feel about using callouts? Uh, I I think that if you can use a callout in a way that's going to complement what you're trying to do. So for example, if my goal here in the bumper is to reinforce something. Right, and I can I can do that effectively using a using a call out. I'll do it. So, for example, maybe what I want to do here is um, I want to say I want to say, hey, go to www .tech technical tutorials com. Right. Let's say that that's what I wanted to do, and I wanted to do make sure that that appears here for part of the video, and that's an easy way to rebrand, right? So I can do that, and that might make sense to do, right? Maybe I might fade that out so that it comes and it goes out, right? So yeah, so so if you can use it in a way that goes along with what you're trying to do. I think a, a, a call out can be good as, as long as it adds to what the person is trying to accomplish. Okay, so the question is, is there a way to fill in um, the black part? So uh, let's see. If what you mean is, let's say that what I'm going to try to do here, I'm going to take this call out out and one of the things that Camtasia will allow you to do with the library is it will allow you to do what's called a title clip and I, I, I think that might be what you're talking about and and that that will appear here at the beginning and even still I'm going to do this the very same way right I'm going to I'm really going to take that title clip and what I like to do with the title clip is just slide this down so that it appears at the beginning right now I Camtasia what you can do with the title clip is you can click edit call out and then you can edit this writing in here go to www.go.com Right, and then of course it's going to it's going to transition in. Um, okay, so when you say you've got a okay, so the question is about a black cloth background, um, but it doesn't cover a little corner. If you're adding in a transition, if you're going to add something from up here, um, one of the things that you can always do with Camtasia, let's say you're going to add in a shape, is you want to look at the shapes properties. Right, whenever you have a shape property. What you can do is you can look at the fill and change the color, right? So if we, if we click that down arrow, we can change that fill color to green, right? Then the, transit, then the, uh, then the background is going to be green. We can look at the fill color, and we can make it red. So typically what you're going to want to do is to look at the fill color in the properties of the callout. And you can always change the color. You can change the effect of the color. Right, so we can change the style. We can typically change whether or not there's going to be a border around it. So you're always going to find that when you are in the properties area of the particular callout. Right, so when you get to the callout, there there should be areas where you can adjust the callout. Okay, great question. That was actually right alongside of what we're trying to do. So uh, so, so again. 
um, when you're when you're adding in your branded video, um, you should probably do the video ahead of time, right? When you're adding it to the timeline. slide this down okay so um, one of the things that we can also do is let's say that what you're going to be doing here at the beginning of course let's say that you actually do have something done let's say you have something done at Fiverr and you want to have a little video done or you want to have one created and you want to add some music to it or you want to just do a visual you can within Camtasia Right, they give you royalty-free music. Now, again, I wouldn't use the same royalty-free music that everyone else has, right? But again, um, adding in music is a good touch to the video because typically you're not going to have a PLR video, and it's gonna, not going to have, and really should not have music to it. Um, but you can add in music, right? And again, all we're really doing when we do that is we're just adding some music to the timeline. So, for example, here's 33 seconds of a song. I'm just going to add that to the timeline, right? And and so uh, I think I can I can play this, but but it, but you would not hear it. Um, we want to adjust the volume, right, on that particular area because we don't want it to we don't want it to overshadow the vocal, and then we want to fade it in and fade it out. Right now, you can always add in music any place on the timeline that you want it. Um, some people will do their will add uh, music to their entire video. Right? I mean, you're certainly you're certainly able to do that. I mean, a lot of videos that you see on YouTube, they've got music running in the background. Um, if you've got something unique um, and you've got something you want to add to a a PLR video, that's certainly something that you can do. But I would just stick to adding in the audio or the additional music to your bumper. Right. What, one of the questions is about um, how the video appears when you first play it. Um, one thing that I would say is that when, uh, when, you're, when you're in the editing process, it's always going to be a little different when you actually render the video. Now, if the, if the rendered video has, a, you know, has an issue, let's say at the beginning, once you've, you've produced the actual video, then it could be the actual clip that's a problem. But if it's just the editing process, then you want to go ahead and render the video and then look at the video in its final production. Because in some cases, when, you're, when a computer doesn't have a lot of memory, what happens is the editor will truncate things. Or it'll try to take shortcuts to try to show you what it thinks it might look like without showing you all the way. So again, uh, what you can do is you can then render the video to see what it's actually going to look like. Sometimes the preview is not always going to show exactly, exactly what that video is going to look like. Okay, but yeah, but that, that does, it does, it does happen sometimes. It does happen that when you render a video or when you're working with a video in the editor, the editor will not always show the video doing what um, it, it, uh, it, it's going to eventually look like. They rendered and downsized it with handbrake. Um, if, if possible, you, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to downgrade it, downsize it. Anything that you're doing in Camtasia, you're typically not going to have to. You should not have to downsize unless you're adding something huge to the video.